anybody um, started to write up their um, reports? No? Because I want to see the draft before you write in the final version of it. Um, you still have the final, the final bits. The last perspective and the last session is not released yet. No, I didn't. <laughs> Hang on. What? The dates? Yes. I'll have to check them in the teacher's room. I have them on the other computer. Um, that's because I am so busy. Because I have to teach you and the new students. Okay. You can email us, you know. I could, but I won't. Alright, we'll continue here. So write this down now. So we're starting the next section of the course, which is called Materials. Materials. Certainly parts are easy. Okay. You have this? Density. Okay. Yeah, which we, you might remember from the first week. Mm -hmm. um, continue. Okay. So you've already seen the formula for density, but I think it's good to write it down again. Density is rho. And in semester one, you should remember that density is how much mass per unit volume there is. So that is density is mass divided by volume. Uh, what's the dimension? dimension? Dimension of this, yeah. It is mass per length cubed. Or as a unit, um, kilograms per meter cubed. Remember this? So um, I would still like you to write this definition down again. The whole thing in the box. Yeah. Write the whole box down. Write the whole box down. I know you speak English because we've talked before, so please do this. Did you write the whole box down? Did you write the whole box down? Did, no, no, it's a yes or no. Did you write the whole box down like I asked you to? Then the answer is no. Write the whole box down. Don't complicate things. Don't complicate things. So we've briefly looked at density in semester one, briefly. In semester one briefly? Yes, yes at the start. Yeah. Very brief though, uh, very brief, um, just in the first lesson. We're going to look at it in a bit more detail now. So what exactly does density tell us? So what exactly does density tell us? So um, it's almost like how compact how tight something is with mass yeah so they give you a context some materials have high density gold for example has a density of 19,320 kilograms per meter cubed okay so that's saying that there are 19,000 kilograms in a meter cubed of gold uh, It's very dense, very dense material. Um, but of course, we don't usually have a meter cubed of gold. I know I don't have a meter cubed of gold. Yeah. So what I would like you to do as a small exercise is tell me what the density is in um, um, grams per centimeter cubed. 
because usually we might have a centimeter cubed of gold. So tell me the density in grams per centimeter cubed. In other words, I would like you to convert this number into grams per centimeter cubed. Try this for me. Yeah, I'll write it down here, okay? So what I want you to do at 19,320, I want you to convert 19,320 kilograms per meter cubed. I want this as some number grams per centimeter cubed. Okay, so I want you to convert. you get? The same number as the previous. Nope. Nope. So no. 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 Got an answer, KJ? Uh, yes. One point nine. Nope. No. Nope. Oh. Don't give me the tenth of the power of business. You don't need to for this. What did you get? Uh, look how quickly you've forgotten semester one. Get an answer pad? No. Terrible. Terrible. Anybody? No. no. Okay. Before I forget, I want everybody to write this down in their notebook as part of their homework. So write this down. Watch the first lesson tonight. No, no, in your notebook. I won't do that one tonight. It will stay in your hands until tonight? Yeah. Watch the first lesson? Tonight. The first lesson of the first lesson. <coughs> lesson one, week one, semester one. You will watch it? Uh, uh, it's on Moodle. It I will check that you watched <laughs> it. Yes, yes, I can easily check this on Moodle. Uh, I know that's possible, but uh, I think the next time I see you, I'll look at you and go, oh yeah, and I'll check it. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so watch. Um, 19,320 mm -hmm. kilograms per meter cubed equals 19,320 kilo is 10 to the 3 grams per meter cubed. So that would be one nine three two zero 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 grams per meter cubed. But we don't want meter cubed. What do we want? Centimeter. So what I'll do is um, I'll put a centi cubed on the top and a centi cubed on the bottom. Now, who remembers how big a centi is? Yeah, it's 10 to the minus 2 cubed. Grams per centimeter cubed. What's wrong? What did you get? The extra one zero. With the extra one zero? Give me a number. Don't give me a... One nine three two two double zero. No. No. Oh. Leave me alone for a minute, I'll type this in. 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the power of minus 2 cubed times 1, 9, 3, 2 equals 19.32 grams per centimeter cubed equals 19.32 grams per per centimeter cubed. Is so, huh? Is yeah.
2 minus 2. Sine tau. If there is C is a C would be Yeah, the C is ten to the minus two, so it's ten to the minus two cube. See? The cube is still there. Yeah, why did you remove from the quarter set? Again, you're forgetting what you learned in week one, lesson one. So in physics, when we write this we actually mean this in physics, which is the same as this, okay. which I taught you on your very first day. So long ago, huh? Yeah. Okay, can I go back now? So that means um, when you have one centimeter cubed of gold, you have 19.3 grams of gold uh, by mass. So one centimeter cubed is quite heavy. 19 grams. Quite heavy. Okay. Um, so that was that. Uh, let us calculate. So if there was some success there. Uh, okay, so this is something with low density. So some materials have a low density. Uh, helium, for example, has a density of only 0 0.179 kilograms per meter cubed. So that means if you have a meter cubed of helium, it only has a mass of 179 grams. So, you know, uh, a meter cubed of helium, you know, would have about this much mass. It's not heavy, it's very light, yeah? You know helium from chemistry? Do you know helium from chemistry? Yeah, so helium, because it's so light, it's used to fill up the balloons, as you know. So uh, helium is a very, very low density material. Uh, very low. So what would be a medium density? So gold is 19,000, that's large. Helium, 0 0.2, that's very low. So what's a material with kind of <coughs> medium level of density? Wood. I think a bit more wood. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, it's funny because it's true actually. Uh, <laughs> because um, we would say water, which is what we are mostly made of anyways. So we're mostly water. Uh, so water would be a medium density. And in case you forgot what water looks like, get a picture. Uh, the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed roughly. Um, and in fact, the value of the density of water is very important constant in science, especially biology and chemistry. So um, it is something that you really should know, this value. It's a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. That is the density of water. Please write that down. You should know this constant. Sometimes I like pictures, sometimes I don't. This lesson, I feel like I want pictures in it. Yeah. Um, okay, you have this one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, anyways, going back to the water, its value is very important. And not only is its value very important, it's often very important to know how your density compares to water. So, for example, um, gold, what was the density of gold? Do you remember roughly? 19,000 yeah. kilograms per meter cubed. Mm -hmm. And the density of water? 1,000. So you can see that with something like gold, it is, oh, I said 19 or 16? 19. Was it 19,000 or was it 16,000? Okay, so that should say 19 then. So we said the density of gold is 19 times more mm -hmm. than of water. So it's 19 times denser than water. Uh, so this gives us our next idea, which we call relative density. So relative density is how dense the material is compared to water. So relative density, S, 
is a measure of density of an object, but compared to water. So for example, uh, the density, relative density, is the density of the object divided by the density of water. So if gold is 19,000 and water is 1,000, then the relative density is 19, 19 times bigger. Uh, there are no dimensions in this, which is a nice thing. Um, okay, so please write this definition down, relative density. You mean by respect to conversion? Yeah, as a fraction. Yeah. Not shown with respect. Mm the object divided by density of the water. Row object, row water. <coughs> uh, it is dimensionless and so it is unitless. of relative density. One, one way it could be useful to know the relative density of something. <coughs> no? Like, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's complicated that though. Something simple. Yeah, go on. Continue. Don't stop. Continue. Explain. Good job. So, <coughs> for example, uh, that's called buoyancy. Um, it means floating. So, as Tacken said, if S is less than 1, like with wood, and you place it in water, what happens? It floats. If S is bigger than 1, like gold, and it's placed in water, what will happen? It will sink. So, this is just one example of how it's useful to know what the relative density is. Uh, because if you're building something, it would be nice to know often if it will float, if it becomes flooded, or if it will sink. Yeah. Buoyancy, is, uh, yeah, buoyancy is the name of uh, the concept of something will float or not. Uh, so for example, um, we say that, you know, if I put this in water, it would probably sink. So we say that uh, this is not buoyant. It will, uh, it will sink. Uh, my cup is buoyant. This will probably yeah. float in water. Because this material, you know this material? What's this material called? I know it's not really paper. It's not quite paper. It's not quite plastic. It's some other name, do you know? No, not quite paper or cardboard. Ceramic. Ceramic? <laughs> Ceramic is like a teacup. No. Uh, polystyrene mm -hmm. is this white material. Oh, polystyrene. Oh, its density oh, is very, very low. So mm, S is, you know, very much less than 1. It will definitely float. So there is a specific case where the, the, the density is low. Ah, um... No, not necessarily. There's some materials with high density which could keep things warm, I guess. But usually, um, low density we care about for like if it'll float or not. And usually, low density means it will keep it warm, like plastic, wood, polystyrene. 
No, definitely not. I can't. It's <laughs> like bullet school. Huh? Bullet school. What the heck is that? Bullet school. <laughs> you know, I don't know this material. Polymer? Yeah. Guess. Polystyrene. Have your best guess at spelling it. I'm not even going to try. Yeah. I don't think that's right, but <laughs> close enough. <laughs> yeah? I really don't like spelling, or spelling chemical names. Too many syllables. Yeah. Like and cheese. What? Like and cheese. Oh. The most loaded. Heave of loaded, yeah. <laughs> Did you guys spell it for it? No, I didn't understand. It's like they make clothes with polyester. Oh, polyester. polyester. There's an extra syllable in there. Polyester. polyester. Um, I don't know if it's related to this material. I don't know. <coughs> um, yes, it yes, seems sir. like polystyrene and polyester are quite different types of material. Um, but maybe they have the same uh, way of production. I don't know. Polyester, polystyrene. No, I think they might be quite different, those materials. Mm -hmm. Polyester is like the skin kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What do you call when they, <coughs> you know, it's a plastic bottle when they recycle it, they make a, like a. Uh, uh, I don't know. A long. Why is that? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'll look it up later. Look up polyester. <laughs> Look up polystyrene, see if they're related. I would think not, though. Not. I might be wrong, though. I don't know. Chemistry teacher might know. Um, okay. Um, so here is a, a table of values of density. Um, so the first one, gold, 19,320 <coughs> kilograms per meter cube, and has a relative density, 19.32. 19 times denser than water. Uh, I think you should <laughs> write this table down because for some of the questions you need the values. Mm. The oh, only yeah. one you're expected to remember for the exam is water. How long is it? Uh, oh, I don't know, like about six or seven, seven, eight, eight maybe, eight yes. rows. That's good. Uh, it'd be a bit tight, I think, yeah. So that's the first one. So gold, very dense. Does anybody know any other material which is very dense? Silver. Silver? Anything else? Like, uh, Something cheaper, maybe. <laughs> uh, cheaper. I don't think it's kind of pricey. Iron. Iron, uh, lead. Yes. Lead. Yes, lead uh, is what they use. Is it no. uh, well, not anymore. Um, lead is what they use. You know, when you get an X-ray, and uh, the doctor stands behind the screen uh -huh. when they give you an X-ray. It's usually a lead screen. Uh -huh. Yeah. What That's not what they use. No, 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 no. We haven't used lead and pencils for years. Pencils are made of carbon now. Graphite. And why you call it lead? Well, because that's what it was to begin with. People shouldn't call it lead. It's not lead. In fact, it's not safe to have it as lead because you can get poisoned by it. You know, you stick it in someone's leg. It's not good for them. All right. Next, uh, silver, which is 10,500. Next, we'll go down to nickel. Nickel is 8,900. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, nickel is high density, but it is a very, very cheap metal. Not expensive, nickel. It's much cheaper than silver. Oh, they do. Mm -hmm. But they mix it with silver. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to reduce the cost. So you can have nickel silver plates instead of silver. It's the same color. Oh, yeah, you see, this is the thing. This is why it's mixed with silver because it keeps the silver looking like uh, a white color, a bright color, you know. Um, salt water. Now, I said water was 1000, which is true. But if you had uh, something like ocean water, salt water, salt water is a little denser than regular water. That's uh, it's significant. A thousand and thirty kilograms per meter cube. What's wrong? There's absolutely nothing funny about this table. <laughs> All right, next. Uh, so, fresh water is 1,000, as you know. Uh, now, ice. Uh, so, what would happen if you put ice in water? The relative density is less than 1, so what would happen? It would float. As you know, ice does float. Why is it less? Ah, we'll see that in a different lesson. Okay, you got that one so far? Right. Next? No, no, there's still more. Um, alcohol is actually quite a lot less than water. Even though it looks and seems like water, it's clear, it's a liquid, <coughs> but uh, it's only, it's not even 800 kilograms per meter cubed. It's less than 0.8 relative density. Okay, next. Uh, is wood, so wood is 700.7, so of course wood definitely floats. Wooden boats, wooden ships definitely float. And the last one is something, yeah? If any liquid has more density than water. Good, yeah. Um, liquids, mercury. Mercury is a metal, but at room temperature it's a liquid. So if you put mercury, pour it into water, it should sink to the bottom of the water. Uh, oil? Oil is less than water, so it'll float on the water. Uh, what are liquids? Well, look, salt water. If you mix salt water with water, the salt water will want to move down. It has more, um, more density. Um, <coughs> If you put oil in water, oil will float because it has less density than water. Won't go down. No, it won't. So you can try it. If you pour some, like, uh, you have sunflower oil or cooking uh, oil. Olive, olive. olive oil. You pour some olive oil in a glass of water, um, it won't really go down. It will try to go to the top. So you'll have to mix it a lot. But if you leave it maybe overnight and go in the morning, you'll see that it should have floated back to the top. You can try it. Just put a bit of olive oil in a glass of water, see what happens. Take a picture for me as well. Um, all right, the last one is air, which is very, very, very low. It is only one kilogram per meter cubed. Tiny. A thousand times smaller than air, uh, water. Okay, you got all these values, yes? Yep, okay. Uh, so let's have a look at some examples here. So um, this first one here, I mix one litre of fresh water with one litre of salt water. Okay. So the first thing is convert litre into SI units, because litre is not a proper unit. So our first question here, um, A, uh, one litre. Now, remember, how many uh, litres are in a metre cube? Does anybody remember? 4, yeah, there's 1,000 litres. 
in um, one meter cubed. Cubed. Isn't it? It is, yeah. So that means one liter equals 0 0.001 meter cubed. That's okay, isn't it? Just divide by a thousand. Yep. Um, okay, so what is the mass of the fresh water and of salt water? Okay, so the first one, the fresh water, what is the density of the fresh water? 1000. 1, What's the formula for density? Mass over volume equals 1000. So what does the mass equal? 1000 V. Uh, but what's the volume here? Well, the volume is 0 0.001. So the answer is the mass will be one kilogram. In C, the density of salt water is 1030. Mass over volume equals 1030. Mass equals 1030 times the volume. So the mass equals 1030 times the volume. So that means here you get um, mass is equal to 1.03 kilograms. So that is the mass for the liter of salt water. That is the mass for the liter of fresh water. And that is the volume of a liter of water. So that's the first part. Yeah. Next part, um, what is the combined mass, combined volume, and combined density? So what you do now is you mix the two together <coughs> into one large bottle. Uh, so what is the total mass? Well, if you add one kilogram of water to 1.0 kilograms of salt water, the total mass is 2.03 kilograms of water. Next is what is the total volume? Now, usually, oh, so I'll just wait a second. So, um, usually when you mix things together, the total volume stays the same. So if you have a liter of water, a liter of coffee, and you mix it together, you'll have two liquids of watery coffee. Now I say usually, but of course there's exceptions. So you know, if you mix some kind of liquid which is an acid and some kind of liquid which is a base, then what happens when you mix a liquid and a base? What will happen? What happens when you mix a liquid and acid and a base? No, no, just what happens when you mix an acid and a base? Have you done this in chemistry? Yeah, but um, don't you get lots of heat and fume? Lots of stuff's happening here. Yeah, like. I mean, some of the mass might have evaporated, you know? Or, yeah, what else happens? Um, I don't know what else. Uh, I suppose if you mix, <coughs> if you mix boiling water and ice, then some of the ice will melt, maybe turn into steam, I don't know. Uh, I'm just saying that Usually when you mix things together, the volume stays the same, but of course there are some exceptions. Huh? What are you saying? If one, if you have a hot water, yeah. and it happens to cool. Yeah, there could, be, there could be some steam or something like this. So usually if there are, if they are neutral materials, you know, they're not an acid or a base <coughs> or chemically violent, uh, and they're all, you know, the same temperature and the room temperature. Usually when you mix things together, the volume stays the same. That's my point. So here, uh, the total volume would be 0 0.001 <coughs> plus uh, 0 0.001. So that is 0 0.002 meters uh, cubed is the total volume. So the last part here 
is what is the density of this new water uh, drink, I suppose. So the density of the mixture is the mass of the mixture divided by the volume of the mixture, which will be 2.03 divided by 0 0.002, which equals... One zero one five kilograms per meter cubed. So when you mix them together, the density is more than that of fresh water, but less than that of salt water. Okay, you got this, KJ? Yeah. Yep. Okay, next. <coughs> Right, um, here's one for you to try. You don't have to write down all the information here, but you can draw the picture. So what happens is, um, I can use my cup here as an example. So the student has some water in a cup. Hey, Jay, what are you doing? Okay, uh, a student has some water in a cup, and they place 10 grams of ice into the bottle of water, and then they put a lid on the top. So please note, the water is nearly to the top, and when they put the ice in and they close the lid, it's completely full to the top, okay? So there's no space inside the bottle, do you understand? So the ice is in the water, the lid is on, there's zero space, extra space. Got that? Yeah. Uh, now, the bottle of water and ice is left out on the table and the ice starts to melt. So, uh, when, it has fully melted, what has happened to the bottle of water? So your three choices are, the volume of the water in the bottle has increased, since it is closed tight, the bottle breaks. So the water has increased in volume and the bottle breaks because it's no space. Choice B, the volume of the water in the bottle has remained unchanged, so even though the ice has melted, it's still the same amount of water, so there's still no space, everything's the same. And see, the volume of the water in the bottle has decreased. Uh, there is now, I should say now, there is now a little space. So the last choice is the water has decreased and now there's a little bit of space. So which do you think is the right answer? A, B, or C? Mm -hmm. A. A, A, B, Z. B. So we're going for our A's and B's. Who thinks A? Let's have a vote. Two for A. Who thinks B? One for B. Two for B. Who thinks C? <laughs> Carrara, you are undecided. A. Okay, so we have three for A, two for B. Yeah? Okay, so we can calculate this and see what happens. Okay, so this is the picture that we have. So we have some ice in the water, okay. and it's full to the top, so there's no space. So it, I don't know what the mass of the water is, but it's not important. And I know what the mass of the ice is. So I'll just call the, the mass of the water, the liquid water, ML. Um, I know what the density of the liquid water is. What is it? 1,000. And the volume of the liquid water, I don't know, but it's not important. I call it VL. The ice... Uh, I know the mass of the ice. What is it? 0 0.010. Yes? Um, I know the density of the ice. What is it? Uh, mm, no, not the relative density. The, it'd be 916, would it? Yeah. Okay. And what's the volume of the ice? Well, my first piece of business is I'll work out the volume of the ice. So density of the ice equals the mass of the ice over the volume of the ice. So the volume of the ice equals the mass of the ice over the density of the ice. Um, so what's the mass? 0 0.010 divided by 916. So it'll be quite small. It'll be 1.0917 times 10 to the minus 5 meters cubed. Okay? Right. Now, the second, uh, so at the beginning, at the start, what's the total volume? 
It's the volume of the liquid of the water plus the volume of the ice, which is 1.0917 times 10 to the minus 5. Now, let's see what happens when the ice has melted. Can I go down? Okay. Yes? All right. So, um, in this picture here, the <coughs> ice has melted, so it's now in the form of water that has been mixed in. Okay, so again, the mass of the liquid, the original liquid, is the same. The volume of the original liquid is the same, and the density of the original liquid is the same. Now, I'll write a new symbol here, M, and I'll write MI. What do you think I mean by MI? Melted ice. This is the melted ice. The volume of the melted ice and the density of the melted ice. Uh, what's the density of melted ice? Uh, 1,000, one because melted ice is water, so that's 1,000. Um, the mass is still the same. 10 grams of ice is still 10 grams when it melts into water. So 0 0.010. So let's calculate the volume. We know that density is mass over volume, so volume is mass over density. So volume will be 0 0.010 divided by 1,000. So when you type that in, you get 1 times 10 to the minus 6. Or if you want, I'll put that as 10 times, hang on, sorry, 10 minus times five. 10 to the minus, minus five. 5. With a 10. No, no minus, 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 minus four. Oh, sorry. I, it should have been one <coughs> times ten to the minus five, five to begin with. Yeah. Are you one hundred percent sure? Yeah. You are correct. Congratulations. <laughs> one times ten to the minus five. Okay. So what's the volume now? So the volume would be the volume of the liquid to begin with, true, yeah. plus the volume of the melted ice, which is one times. 10 to the minus 5. Now, look at the volume at the start. Look at the volume at the end. Has it increased or decreased? Decrease. So if the total volume has decreased, the correct answer is... Yeah, which nobody got right. So uh, when the ice has melted... It becomes liquid, but because the density of ice is less than of water, it means when it becomes uh, liquid, um, it uh, has less volume. So when the ice, in other words, when the ice melts in the water to make water, the volume of the water made is less than the volume of the ice. So the result is it'll actually uh, total volume will decrease. Now you, ex, you, some of you look like you're accepting this. Some of you are looking like, no, this, this doesn't make sense. So if you like, you can put some ice into some water and fill the glass to the very top, and then put like a, you know, co uh, like a coaster, yeah, like something like this. Okay. Put in some ice. Listen. Put in some ice. Fill it up with water. And keep filling it up with water until it's right at the top. And then you can just put a lid over it and make sure there's, you know, something like this, and make sure there's no space. Then, after the ice is melted and you take the lid off, uh, it shouldn't be up to the top anymore, it should be a little bit less. It definitely won't be more. If it was more, what would happen? The water would start to come out the side when the ice melts, which is not what happens. Uh, questions now? Uh, one more question and then we're finished. So this one is um, uh, you mix 10 grams of nickel with 1 gram of silver. So this is common when you're making jewellery. What is the density of the mixture? Um, do you know what? Okay, so the density of the mixture would be uh, the mass of the mixture divided by the volume of the mixture. So if you have 10 grams of silver with, what did I say, 10 grams of, 
10 and 1, yeah. So if you had 10 grams of silver, uh, nickel with 1 gram of silver, what's the total mass? No. 0 0.011 grams. Divided by the volume of the nickel plus the volume of the silver. Now remember, density is mass over volume. So what's volume? Mass over <laughs> density. So this is 0 0.011 the mass of the nickel divided by the density of the nickel plus the mass of the uh, silver divided by the density of the silver. Now don't pack up. I need you to tell me what the uh, density of the um, nickel is and I need you to tell me what the density of the silver is. So what's the density of nickel? What was it? Tell me. Okay, and of silver? 10,500. Thank you. Uh, so let's get the total, de the density of the mixture. So 0 0.011 divided by 0 0.010 over 8900 plus 0 0.001 divided by 10,500. So it should be somewhere between 9,000 and 10,000. Uh, yep, I get 9025 kilograms yeah point per meter cubed so this would be the density of a mixture of 10 grams of nickel with one gram of silver so uh, if I have this is common when it comes to jewelry so if you have one gram of silver mixed with 10 grams of nickel you have 11 grams in total but only one gram if it's actually valuable material and uh, this would be the density of the mixture so as part of the homework, uh, you'll have to work backwards. I give you the mixture and you have to find out how much you know, silver was in it originally. Um, okay, right, these are the questions. I want you to try these, uh, do these for the next class.